Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today is a stash of Stephanie Day where we create a new fat quarter friendly pattern that you can use with our stash club, Stash with Stephanie, or just to bust your own stash at home or both. You know, lots of us have like getting new things, but we also have a lot of old things. So you can do this with a mix of things, especially today um, because we are using K-Facet. So I know that a lot of people who really like K-Facet tend to collect K-Facet. And this one is coming in multiple sizes. So you, if you're a member of the club, then you got 12 and you can always easily add to some cake that you have in your stash to make it bigger. And this one is a very easy, very fast quilt to do. We're doing it Barcello style. So we're gonna be making some fabric tubes and cutting them apart. And it also uses really large piecing. We did this a couple months ago when we did frequency. You guys loved it. And in that case, we had really small strips that we were cutting apart. These end up being about the same size quilt with half the fabric because the pieces are so large. So we're not losing a lot to those seam allowances. But with CAFE, you know, you want it to use as much of the big print as possible because you want to show off the print and the color. So a little bit about Stashing with Stephanie before we get started. If you have not joined the club, you are really missing out. Here's what you get. You get 12 fat quarters for the price of 10, that's $29.99 each month plus shipping. And we send you a $10 coupon to use off a $20 purchase. So if you want to get additional coordinating fabric, you can. Um, this month, it's a lot of cave pre-cuts and it also is available in our cave kits um, that the rainbow stash ones that are traveling the country. So that's exciting. And also we give you a free pattern. And when you join, we get send you a coupon code usually within the first 24 hours of joining where you can download all of the stash and patterns we've released to date for free. I think this is a 14th pattern that we are doing. So it's a huge deal. You get a big value right up front just when you join and you get lots of really fun inspiration to bust that stash. Let's get started. So this month's stashing fabric is the Cave Spring 2019. And I know that that's misleading because it's fall, but this was the latest collection to come out. There were 68 some fabrics, I think, in the collection because it's three guys who created as part of the Cave Facet Collective. There's Cave, Brandon, and Mabley, and Phil Jacobs. And they all come up with these really cool designs. I love these little geode ones. They're just so pretty and they work really well on a big scale. So we are going to be using them large. So the very first thing we have to do is arrange this in rainbow color order. That's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And then I usually put my blacks on the end, which you can see here. And if you are a member of Stash with Stephanie, you already got this in rainbow color order. We already sent it off to you that way. Um, and a lot of times designers, when it comes pre-packaged, if you buy like a fat quarter bundle in the store, it's already arranged in a really pleasing manner. So sometimes you can just stick with that. But if you are pulling from your stash, keep that in mind, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And then in this pattern, it helps to have a really light one at the very end after the black, cause that kind of is gonna separate the rainbow because we're gonna actually end up having this look like a rainbow in the end, which is really cool. Now, the important part is to have that red or pink in this case be at the top because that is going to be the top of our rainbow. So we wanna have that in our fabric number one position um, and then just work your way down from there depending on how your rainbow works out. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing these together into strips, um, sets, and depending on what size quilt you're doing will depend on how many need to go in here. But essentially, we're going to be sewing the tubes in halves. So in this case, I'm gonna be sewing six strips for one half of my tube and six strips for the other half of my tube. And by the way, if you want all the cutting instructions to go with this and how many fat quarters and what sizes to cut everything, you can get that. It is called Rainbow Bargello or Modern Rainbow Bargello and you can get that and lots of other cave fabric and supplies over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. 
All right, so I've got my first two pieces here and I'm just gonna lay them with one and two. And I'm just gonna start sewing these guys right sides together and just keeping one going to the left here and just adding new to the side. One tip when you're doing this, it is really, really helpful to start with your selvages and line those up because then when we go to put the two together, it's gonna be a lot easier to get everything together. All right, so I've got those selvages nice and lined up and I'm just going to sew with a quarter inch seam to sew the strips together. All right, so since these tubes are super wide, I'm gonna go ahead and wait to press until I have my halves and my tubes sewn together. So I've got piece one, piece two, and piece three is next up. So I'm gonna go ahead and line those selvages up again, flip it over and sew it together. So I'm just gonna sew down this side here. All right, so I'm just gonna keep on going down the row, adding and arranging my selvages up top to try to keep those as even as possible until I have half of my tubes sewn together. Now it's time to press all these. And if you've been watching me for any length of time, you know I like to press my seams open. It makes for a really flat quilt and great joins. And also you can do pretty much whatever you want with quilting on it. So to do that, what I do is I put the tip of my iron right smack dab in between that seam allowance. And I put at least three fingers down here in order to sort of pre-press that seam as I'm going. And then when you're all done with this, you're gonna flip it over and press it from the right side as well. All right, so this is why I like to do this in two parts. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that this is really nice and flat because you want it to be nice and flat going all the way across the surface. You don't want it to be sort of cockeyed because then when you go to cut, you're not gonna be able to get a nice straight row. It's gonna be a wobble in there that you're gonna to have to deal with at some point. So ideally, all of your selvages are going to be even with the selvages below, but if they're not perfect, What's more important is that everything lies very nice and flat, and then maybe you're a little off up here and that's okay. All right, so I've got this, and we're not gonna press this seam open at this point. We're gonna do that once we've cut it into a tube and we're starting to assemble it into rows. So I'm just gonna lay, move this down so you can kind of see where we're at here. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just line up my edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some pins in here. Now these should be the same width. Um, if not, then it means you maybe have some issues either cutting accurately or sewing an accurate quarter inch seam. It shouldn't make a huge deal in this quilt because there's a lot of wiggle room in terms of putting everything together because we don't actually have any seams to match when we sew our rows together. But that's something to keep an eye on and work on because it does matter for other quilts. All right, so I've got my pin there, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and also get my pin in down here. And if you notice, this is a little bit longer than this, and that could be your fat quarter could have been cut different sizes. Um, there's all sorts of reasons you could have been a little bit off with your sewing, but it's okay. So don't worry if it ends up being different lengths. So I'm just gonna put a couple more pins in here. I think five for the whole side is probably gonna do her for me. I just wanna make sure that that's not shifting so that everything stays nice and flat for that tube. But if you wanna pin more than that, by all means, go ahead. All right, so for this next part, I'm gonna show you how to do the first overcut because it'll show you how to line everything up. I'm not gonna give you the exact measurement that you're supposed to cut to or the number of them that you need it because that information is available in the pattern and a great way to say thank you for the free video tutorials we do is to go purchase the pattern and the supplies from us. It helps support us and helps us bring you new videos every week and patterns every month. So check that out. It's over at shop.quiltedxonymous.com. All right, so the important thing to know is that there are two different measurements that you're going to be cutting to, and depending on which strips that you're working from, you're gonna have different quantities of that. So make sure you pay close attention to your pattern so that you get the right amount, and you don't need to go buy a bunch more fat quarters in order to make that work. So what I'm gonna do here is I am lining up some inch lines 
with the seam allowances here because those should be nice and even. And if you're a little off on them, if they're not perfect, like this one isn't like exactly on, I'm off like an eighth of an inch. No big deal, it's fine. As long as they are evenly off, like it is the eighth of an inch mark is parallel to that seam allowance, then you're gonna be fine. You're gonna have a nice straight strip. Also, it's important to note that you are not gonna be able to cut this entire bit in one go. You're gonna have to do it in two slices, which I'll show you how to do here, but keep that in mind. You're gonna be rearranging just a little bit and you wanna make sure that you keep everything nice and flat when you're doing that. Also, pay attention to where your selvages are because we want to make sure that our measurement that we need to cut to is beyond where the selvage is, but not so far beyond that we're not gonna have enough to cut from our piece. So I know that sounds intimidating, it really isn't. Just give yourself like maybe a quarter of an inch past the selvage and then you'll be able to get everything in there. All right, so once I've made sure that I've got my lines all lined up along those seam allowances, and I know that I'm cutting past the measurement that I need to cut to for this first part, then I can go ahead and just cut like I normally would. Just going as far as I can with my regular ruler. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of pull that up and to the side, and then just real gently pull everything to me Now I'm gonna line everything up again. And again, I am lining up that inch mark right on that seam allowance and making sure I'm nice and parallel going up from there. And that I'm also nice and even with the line that I already cut. And then I'll be able to cut a nice straight strip all the way down. All right, so from all the rest of the strips that you need to cut from this tube, you can cut to the exact measurement. So you can line it up with the, the ruler with the parallel line that is going, you can line up your inch line just right even with the seam allowance. And then you can line up the edge with whatever the measurement is that you need to cut to on here. So you wanna pay attention to those two areas, the distance, the width you're supposed to cut your strip to, and then also make sure your inch mark is nice and even with that seam allowance. So you get a nice straight square cut. So just keep on cutting down in whatever quantities you need in order to make this work. For this first one, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna flip it around and you're just going to line up the inch mark with whatever it is that you need to cut to and then you're still gonna line up that other inch line with the seam and then you'll have a nice square strip to cut from from here. So I'm gonna do the rest of that cutting off camera because we don't wanna give away that measurement. Go get it over at shop.quiltaddictstylist.com. This is called the Modern Rainbow Bargello. So check it out there. All right, so I've got everything cut and trimmed and now it's time to cut apart our tubes to form our Bargello. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you really hang tight to those uh, instructions and it'll tell you what number fabric needs to be cut in order to go where. You'll be able to see that no matter what size you're doing. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to cut them apart here. There's a couple of tools that make this really useful, a good, nice, sharp pair of scissors and a seam roller can help you from having to go back and forth to the iron constantly. So we didn't press this top seam here. We're gonna need to do that in order to get this piece in here. I'm kind of starting from the center and working my way out um, in this video, because I've already done a good chunk of the quilt. I usually do a little, well, as much as I can really before I film. Uh, that way I know, you know where the trouble points are gonna be and what I need to pay attention to and call out for you guys. So what you can do with the seam roller is you could just take it to the iron and press it, or you can take your seam roller and you can just roll over the top of that and that makes that seam nice and flat and you'll be able to sew that together and then use that as well as you're working on it. I'm gonna do that for both of my seams uh, that were on the edge that we did not press open. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a design wall or space for it in my sewing room. And so what I typically do is I'm laying quilts out on my bed and this way I was able to just bring this into the bedroom and I would just iron my seam flat on my dresser top um, and then I didn't have to keep going back and forth. I could just get it all together, pin it and have everything laid out and ready to go. So that worked really well for me. All right, so for this one, I've got my one fabric. Everything is going the wrong side up here. 
at this point. So here's my one fabric and here's my 12 fabric because I'm doing the version that has 12 fabrics in it. So what I wanna do is I need to trim this larger, wider one in half. So what I need to do is line up to make sure that these seams are right on top of each other on both sides. You can pin if that makes you feel more comfortable or you can kind of just eyeball it and go from there, which is what I'm gonna do here. All right, I've got those lined up here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda, holding those in place, I'm kinda finger pressing first, and then you can either hit this with the iron or again, your seam roller is a real nice one to do this with. And what this is gonna do is it gives you a fold line exactly halfway in between so you can cut on this line and that way you don't have to measure it out and do it like perfectly with your rotary cutter, although you could if you wanted. But this way I know that I'm exactly halfway and then I'm gonna use my scissors to just cut across that top. Do make sure before you do this that you are cutting the right section because there is not a ton of wiggle room, there is some, um, but not a ton of wiggle room if you cut too many of these wrong. All right, so just cutting across that fold. And now I've got half of my 12 piece and my entire one piece up top. And that is going to be just to the right of my center um, for that. And so then the next piece needs to be coming down from there. And in this case, we want it so that this is up top so that we have, it's gonna be going down because the rainbow is gonna be coming out. So you can see how the bar shallow kind of works. This is my skinnier piece. And in all the skinnier pieces, you're gonna cut right on the seam allowance. So for this one, I know that I have to cut in between piece 12 and piece 11. Again, that might be different for you depending on what size quilt you're doing. So pay attention to your uh, printable instructions to go with that. But I need to go ahead and flip this together. And then I can see my seam line and I am just gonna cut right on top of that seam that I sewed. And when this is all said and done, it's going to be the same length as the piece that we cut down the center. So this is really nice. You don't have any seams to pick. You just have to cut it um, across the center for the wider pieces and across the seam for the shorter pieces. All right, so now that there is ready to go. Of course, I still have these seams to press open before I can pin anything together. So I'm gonna do that real quick now. There's always gonna be two in each one right where those halves of came together. Again, you can always press, but the seam roller is really handy if you don't wanna keep going back and forth between the iron and everything else. And then also if you're not in a room, like if you're like me and I was laying this out in my bedroom and then I could just press my seams open just on top of my dresser and I didn't have to bring anything fancy in and I could just have everything laid out, make sure everything was the way it should be. Now, I don't really go too crazy pinning this. I just wanna make sure that it is evenly distributed across the length of the row, so that way I don't get anything bunched up, but everything should be the same length at this point. So what I'm just gonna do is flip these guys right sides together, and I always, when I'm pinning rows together, start in the corner. And then I try to find the halfway point. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So keeping everything nice and flat on my table, I want to make sure that this is about halfway in between this block and it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pieces lined up and as long as this seems straight, it, it likely is going to be. Um, you probably won't have to ease in too much crazy stuff. This is just to kind of keep it nice as you're working on it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go about halfway in between. And again, there are no seams to match because we've got our seams here and then there are equidistant from the seams of the other ones, which is really nice because at this point you can kind of just make sure that everything is good to go. And then I'm gonna go about halfway in between again on both sides. And then repeat this all on your other half and then we're ready to sew. So still using that quarter inch seam, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew down that piece. 
And one thing you might wanna do is just kinda give it a lift as your pieces go over the area where your bobbin is because sometimes those seams can get flipped going the other way. And so if you just take a second and once that has passed over, like it has here, and just give it a lift, then everything usually lays nice and flat and you don't flip anything the wrong direction. All right, so now it's time to press this open again. And again, I really like to press seams open and I just sort of open them up ahead of time with my fingers and sort of finger press that. The only difference here is I am lifting and setting that iron down because I don't wanna accidentally push any of these seams going in the wrong direction. Once you get all the way down, go ahead and flip it over as well and then give it a press from this side as well. And you can see that it is starting to form that Bargello. So we get that step down. And so it's gonna look like a rainbow curving down. And by having the different size pieces, it's gonna make that rainbow curve a little bit gentler, a little wider, um, rather than having it be so stark. And adds a little bit extra visual interest. And we're able to really show off the big, bright and bold, beautiful cape prints. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You guys know everything you need to know now in order to finish this quilt. You just keep adding rows and adding rows and you pin them together the same way and it goes really, really fast. I could have had this top done in a day if I hadn't had left a little bit left. So that way I could film this tutorial for all of you. Um, and I did the lap size version with the 12 fat quarters. So it, it's really fun. It's really a quick quilt and it would be quick at a larger size as well because we're using such large pieces. We're strip piecing the whole thing, which makes it, and there are no seams to match when you're putting your rows together. So it makes it fast, makes it easy. Really a great one to show off big prints with. Well, if you wanna sign up for Stashing with Stephanie, you can do that over at shop.quiltatexonomous.com. You're gonna get 12 fat quarters for the price of 10, $29.99 each month plus shipping. Plus we give you a $10 of a $20 purchase coupon so you can get more of that month's fabric or something coordinating with it. And also you get free patterns, including this one and every other one that we have done for Stashing with Stephanie as soon as you sign up. We send you that coupon code, usually within the first 24 hours when you sign up. And then you have access to all of our Stashing with Stephanie patterns that we have released and any more that we release as long as you're a member. Thanks so much for following along. If you just wanna make this pattern, it is called the Modern Bargello Rainbow or Modern Rainbow Bargello. And it is available also over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Again, a great way to say thanks for the free video tutorials is when you see a project that you wanna give a go, you get the supplies from us. So thanks so much for following along and until next week, happy quilting.